DNA replication is the process by which a duplicate copy of the genetic material is made before a cell divides. The steps in replication are highly conserved in all organisms. There are a few details that differ between bacteria and eukaryotes, but we focus on bacterial replication in this animation for simplicity. The process of DNA replication is broadly described as having three phases – initiation, elongation and termination. Let's begin by considering the initiation phase. For copying to take place, the double helical structure of the DNA must first be opened at a site termed the origin of replication to allow access by the machinery that will copy the DNA. This opening is regulated by a series of initiation regulatory proteins not shown here. Once open, a DNA helicase, a ring of six subunits, is loaded onto one strand of the DNA at each side of the replication bubble. This establishes two replication forks that will move away from each other as replication proceeds. The synthesis of DNA is catalyzed by an enzyme called DNA polymerase. However, DNA polymerases cannot start a new strand from scratch. Instead, they can only elongate an existing polymer of DNA or RNA. Consequently, a primer sequence needs to be made from which DNA polymerase can continue its synthesis. Primers are made by an enzyme called primase. Once access to the single strands of the DNA has been obtained, the primase is loaded onto the DNA. The primase synthesizes a small stretch of RNA by copying the sequence of nucleotides on the template strand. A DNA polymerase will later elongate this small RNA stretch. The next steps allow loading of the DNA polymerases onto the DNA to copy the entire chromosome. The first component that is loaded is the sliding clamp a ring-shaped structure that binds at the three prime end of the newly made RNA primer. To get onto DNA and encircle it, the clamp is loaded by a clamp loader complex. The five protein clamp loader complex binds to the sliding clamp and binding of ATP allows opening of the sliding clamp ring. The opened ring then encircles the template primer junction at the three prime end of the primer. Interaction with the 3' prime end of the DNA stimulates ATP hydrolysis and the clamp loader dissociates from the DNA to be replaced by the replicative DNA polymerase. The 3' prime end of the primer is positioned in the polymerase active site to allow addition of nucleotides to this end. During elongation, the replication bubble gets bigger as the helicases move apart, establishing two replication forks that move in opposite directions. The sliding clamp and polymerase unit at each replication fork moves along the DNA as the helicase unwinds the double-stranded DNA to expose single strands. Let's focus on just the right-hand fork for the moment, as the processes at both forks are identical. Polymerases are loaded onto both the top and the bottom DNA strands at the fork. Because polymerases only synthesize DNA in the 5' to 3' direction, the two strands must be copied in opposite directions. The bottom strand in this fork is the leading strand. The polymerase on this strand moves continuously from left to right, synthesizing DNA as it travels. The top strand is the lagging strand, on which just a short stretch of DNA is made by the polymerase elongating in the 5' to 3' direction. After synthesizing this short stretch of DNA, the polymerase then dissociates and a new polymerase binds at the fork to elongate the next RNA primer. So priming and elongation are happening repeatedly on the lagging strand as the replication fork moves along the DNA. Synthesis is discontinuous. The short stretches of DNA that are made on the lagging strand are called Okazaki fragments after their discoverer. During the course of replication, these fragments are stitched together. When the lagging strand polymerase runs up against a previously made Okazaki fragment while in the process of synthesizing DNA, the replicative DNA polymerase 3 is replaced by DNA polymerase 1, which has 5' prime to 3' prime exonuclease activity. This exonuclease then degrades the RNA primer in front of it, synthesizing DNA as it goes. Once the RNA primer is removed, the two sections of DNA are joined by DNA ligase. Now the lagging strand has been elongated by one more Okazaki fragment. While this view of the replication fork is easiest to understand, in reality, the leading and lagging polymerases are coupled and move in concert with the helicase. This coupling requires one DNA strand to be looped around so that the lagging polymerase can synthesize DNA in the 5' to 3' direction, 
while moving with the fork. We explore this coupling in more detail in a separate animation. Much less is known about the details of the termination of DNA replication. Once the entire chromosome is copied, the two replication forks meet each other and are dismantled. The ends of the new DNA strands are then joined, again by DNA ligase. The two daughter DNA molecules now consist of one parent strand of DNA shown in grey and one newly made strand shown in green. Thus, DNA replication is termed semi-conservative.